guys. Today I'm working on my Jeep and doing the wheel bearing and the hub assemblies because mine are bad. And I'll show you here in a minute on what it looks like when they're bad. If they're not making noise, mine aren't making any noise, but you can definitely tell they're bad. <clears throat> went ahead and went with Moog this time, besides Timken. I replaced them with Timken probably six or seven years ago. But uh, I can no longer get Timken locally with a warranty. And Timken's no longer made in the U.S. anymore. They outsourced them. Uh, the wheel bearings anyway. Last I heard, their um, uh, tapered roller bearings are still made in the U.S. But everything else is outsourced. But, uh, or at least these are outsourced. But uh, Moog's good. They make good stuff, so these should be fine. Plus, I got a warranty on them. And... So many of these bearings are loose out of the box, no matter what brand you get. I wanted to go ahead and get them so I could test them on the counter before I bought them to make sure they were they were tight and not loose and not have to order some, have them be loose, send them back and whatever. But I also got some other stuff that you don't necessarily need. When went ahead and went to the Dodge dealer and uh, got six of the hub bolts because I've taken mine in and out so many times and I don't know how rusted they're going to be because um, I've, I've taken this off road quite a bit since the last time I took them out and uh, I didn't clean clean the Jeep up very well but these should all be anises so that should come out but I wanted to go ahead and replace them plus they're only seven bucks at the dealer so why not they're not that much also stuff that I probably don't need but I'm going to get anyway new axle nut washers and castle uh, keeper to keep everything steady and uh, yeah and you're gonna need a 36 millimeter if I remember right it should be 36 millimeter this is the only axle nut shock socket I have so it should be 36 millimeter and uh, let me go show you what a bad one looks like all right now when you check this out you might need two people Somebody needs to look at the ball joints and make sure the ball joints aren't what, what are moving. Now, I replaced my ball joints about two to three years ago with some uh, uh, some heavy-duty ball joints that are actually metal, metal to metal, so there's no plastic sleeve, and I've checked both sides. They're all tight, but uh, you might need to have two people look at the back side to make sure your ball joints aren't moving. You just check the wheel, grab the bottom, grab the top. I don't know how good this is going to show up on camera, but the whole wheel is moving back and forth, and like I said, I've already looked at the ball joints, I put my hand on the ball joints while I move it, and the ball joints are not moving, they're tight. So another thing you can do, uh, look between the rotor and the backing plate, and if the rotor is moving in and out towards the backing plate, that means it's a wheel bearing also because a ball joint's not going to make the rotor move to the backing plate. Uh, everything would move together. So this is a ball joint, or this is a uh, wheel hub. Now I got new wheels. I put those on a couple weeks ago. So uh, and I put them on with the shop air at work. So I'm probably going to have to lower it down on the ground and manually manually break these loose. Because uh, I don't know if my electric impact will break a loose in the air. So, uh, yeah, I'll be back when I got the wheels off. And I will show you to go from there. Alright. Now that you're here, take off the brake caliper. Uh, my bolts are aftermarket, so your mileage may vary. But these are 12s. I don't know what the factory ones are. Uh, I don't remember what the factory ones are. Take that and uh, set it aside or hang it on something. Um, I'm probably going to zip tie it to my coil. Uh, I wish I would have thought about it. I would have brought um, my uh, caliper hangers from work, but uh, I didn't think about it. Um, and after you take that off, you can take your rotor off. But before you take your rotor off, I would go ahead and pull the cotter pin, pull the uh, castle castellating lock. Uh, if you should have a wavy washer underneath that, uh, if you still have it, uh, and I would go ahead and break loose this this bolt, because um, if not, you might have some trouble. Uh, 
to break loose this bolt, just take a flathead screwdriver, stick it between the rotor, and it'll and it'll stop on one of these as you break it loose. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right, that cut pin. Carpet off. Yours might not come off this easy. Like I said, I've had this here off somewhat recently. Carpet's off. And this is the wavy washer I was talking about. That This doesn't come in the new uh, nut set, but this is something... It's not... I mean, it is important. But if you don't have it, I guess you don't have it. Um, I, this is, as far as I know, this is discontinued. So, uh, yeah, if you don't have it, you don't have it. Bill? Yep, it is a 36. All right. Now, this should be 175, 175 foot-pounds. So, I'm going to try it with my impact first, see if that takes it off. And it does. Sweet. Now, if you don't have an impact, take a screwdriver. Take a screwdriver. Put the screwdriver. I can't see it. Put the screwdriver in one of the one of the vent holes and one of the vent holes right here and then as you when you put the wrench on it it's going to back up against here so that'll keep it from turning and then just put a big breaker bar on it with a 36 and break it loose I'm going to keep this on a little bit just in case I have to hit it to take it off. Here's another look at this being bad. You can't really, you're not going to be able to see it really. But hear how it's moving and flopping around? That should not do that. You might see it move a little bit in the camera. But this should not be moving up and down like this. Alright. Now the fun part. I'm not going to be able to show you this. <clears throat> Those are 12.13 millimeters. There's one there. One right here. One right here. One up there, and then one on the other side, right here. Like I said, it's a 13 millimeter 12 point, so... It's... They should only be torqued to 175. So, uh... We'll see if I can get them off. There's two. If I was smart, I'd be using a breaker bar. <clears throat> Ooh. Yeah, there's three. That was that one was fun. <laughs> Sees. That's one thing with these bolts and the hub. Anti-seize, anti-seize, anti-seize. 
Because as, as you see, you might, you can't see from that. Anymore. See how mine's already falling out? If uh, this is your first time, or the person before you didn't use anesthes, you would not be able to pull this out. No way, no how. You would need a hammer and a chisel, or a big air hammer, and start knocking and trying to spin this hub where you can spin it. And once you get it to spin, the this this metal uh, backing plate where it bolts onto the hub, not the not the backing plate, this this flange. Once you get this after the bolts are out, once you get this flange to spin, you're golden. Just keep on spinning it around, and then since you're getting rid of it, you can go on the back side and try to hit this to get it to come loose. Um, but yeah, first time I did this, which is one reason I had to replace them because I actually. I was replacing my U-joints, and I ruined one of these trying to get it off. Um, yeah, you can get an extension. People say you can get an extension on this bolt and turn the wheel and use the axle housing to help. I've never, I've never ever gotten that to work. Ever. More anesthes. Yum. But anesthes does the trick because... Well, this is loose. I don't want. I do not want to pull the axle shaft out. So, push the axle back through. I, I don't want to pull the axle shaft out because my axle shaft seals are already leaking. There's the washer, and there we go. Here's your uh, backing plate, and here's my wheel hub. And you can hear. Hear those bearings moving around there? Yeah, this, these weren't making any noise, but you can hear the bearings moving around. And yep. So I'll keep these as backups. I have my original hubs. Already as backups. I'm gonna go ahead and keep these as backups too. I'm keeping all these that I can as backups to use on the trail because these will work on any of my Jeeps. So now clean up this face, clean up the inside of here before you put the new one on. Get any uh, chunks of dirt off there. I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this up. I think I have some. Emery cloth or something. I'll get in there and clean all that up. Alrighty. Got my new hub. Got my new bolts. Got my new bolts. And the good old anesthes. <clears throat> now, if you love yourself, you will put anesthes on this. If not, your hub will not fall out. I guarantee it. The next time you try to take it apart, your hub will not fall out. So, doesn't matter which anesthes you use, copper or aluminum. I got both. Copper is usually more for high heat, so I'm going to go ahead and use the aluminum. It doesn't matter, though. You can use either or. Let's put it in here inside the hub. You can either put it in here, or you can put it on the back of the hub. It's going to be cleaner for me to put it in here, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. Never tell it. Put some on the face too. Not just all over the hub, but on the face, the mating surface right here on the outside. You can put a little bit on your stub shaft. I don't remember if I put some on my stub shaft or not. But this is another spot for it to rust. As you can see, this one's, like I said, this one's practically new and I have replaced it before uh, this one's practically new because I, I did have to replace the stub shaft because I messed up the ears so. all right now the backing plate matter of fact it goes like this <laughs> the wrong way it goes like this here I 
I'm going to put anesthesia on the very tip of the bolts too. But yeah, if you want to put anesthesia on the back of this, put it around here on this lip. Not really right here, but around this machined lip right here and right here. And I'm probably going to go ahead and put some on there anyway. It's probably overkill, but I'm going to be the one working on this next time. So, too much anesthesia. There's never enough, uh, too, not, too much anesthesia, ever. Especially when you're working on these Jeep hub bearings, or Dodge hub bearings, either or. Any of these sawed axle hub bearings. So, this, threads are gonna spline up with it. Take that, move this around where the lines up with the holes. Should be somewhere right here. I think it's all the way back. I'm gonna make sure it's lined up. Put the top bolt in for the back side. Alright, that's lined up. So, so I'm gonna put anesthesia on this bolt also. Might as well. Shouldn't need it on the whole bolt, but this this is definitely overkill. But my bolts came out nice, so you can get corrosion in between where the bolt mounts and the hub. So why not? I'm gonna go ahead and start on my bolts. I'm going to look like the Tin Man after this. Alright, now these bolts get torqued to 75 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There's one. There's two. And there's three. And be on the safe side. I'm going to go ahead and go to 80 just because I use anesthes. Because that will screw your readings. And there we go. Now, I'm not going to put NSCs on this because that will definitely screw up the reading. Got my new hardware. First things first. Washer, second thing, nut, I'm going to bump it a little bit with my impact. Put the rotor back on it. Take screwdriver again, this time put it right here because we're going to be tightening it.
And my, like I said, my torque wrench only goes only goes to 150. Most torque wrenches that you get at part stores and stuff will only go to around 150. So yeah, just you can get them there that aren't, but uh, yeah, 150. Now that's 150, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little bit more. That's 150. That's what I'm doing. It turned just a little bit more. That's where I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna tighten it back up later on. Uh, probably Monday or Tuesday. <clears throat> I'm gonna take it into work and do it. Or maybe tomorrow, I might go out and uh, find a torque wrench that actually goes to 175 and then torque this because this does, this is important. Having this torqued correctly does the preload on this hub and that keeps them good. You go tighter or you go looser, it creates looseness in the bearing and have a bad day. So, next, if you still have it, your wavy washer. Then my new castellated catch. Line it, line it up where it. I see the hole. Then new cotter pin. Never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever reuse a cotter pin. Cotter pins are consumable items. Don't reuse it. Especially if it's something you're driving every day. If it's something that you you just take off road, or it's something that is a quick fix to get you off a trail or something, fine. But don't reuse a cotter pen. Then the cotter pin around, and as far as the barrier, this side's we're pretty much done. I got to put the brakes back on it. Alrighty, now put your bolts back in it. I don't know the torque specs on these, but these you don't need it. The caliper mounting bolts. I don't know the torque specs on these, but not tight. Do not over torque these things because. If you over torque these things, you will strip out your knuckle. And if you strip out your knuckle, that's a trip to the junkyard or order one online. Ask me how I know, because when I first got this thing, when I first got this thing, one of these knuckles was stripped out and I had to go to the junkyard and get a knuckle for it. Don't cross thread them either. This, this knuckle's the actual. This this knuckle's the junkyard knuckle. This is the knuckle I went to the junkyard to get. Again, not tight. It'd probably be better using a quarter inch ratchet or a ratchet wrench at that. That's done. There's one side down, and you can't hear anything. That's how it's supposed to be. 
hear nothing. I like this one. Alrighty. So, yeah, that's it. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. But, uh, that's pretty much it. Alright, got the other side done. And, uh, yeah. These copper bolts were 10 millimeter. So, uh, yeah. I actually think that 10 millimeter might be aftermarket 12 or whatever it was. Might be. Fa I don't remember. I've. You know, these are reman new slash reman calipers. I did a video on doing a brake job on this. Uh, and I ended up, all of my calipers ended up having a, a slice in the, uh, in the, uh, the piston, uh, dust or piston dirt guard or whatever the bellows boot for the piston uh every one of them except one of them had a rip so i just replaced all my calipers um that was an expensive job Plan planned on doing just brakes and rotors and now i'm getting calipers anyway so uh yeah the bolts that are with the calipers came with the calipers so yeah anyway got this side done everything's all nice and tight now i just gotta put the wheels back on and uh i'll be done and i can show you what uh it's supposed to look like. Alright, now I can show you what this is supposed to look like. That's my steering wheel. No movement whatsoever. No matter what I do, no movement. That is how it should be. So, got both both my wheels back on. I just got to put the center caps back on my wheels. I actually put my hub center rings in my wheels because those didn't come in in time for me to put them on when I mounted my mounted my wheels. They actually came in the day after, and I just haven't taken them back off to put them on. So I got my front ones on. I'll do my rear ones later. But uh, yeah, it's all good, all done. So. Uh, that's it, how to, how to replace your front hub bearing, wheel hub assembly, on your Jeep XJ, Jeep TJ, it pretty much applies to any of the Jeeps. They all use either a 3-bolt or a 4-bolt unibearing. It's pretty much all the same, but uh, this specifically works on the XJs, and I know for a fact the TJs, because this is actually a TJ front axle. Because uh, it's the high, this the low pinion, not the high pinion that they used in the '99 and before. But um, yeah, that's it, and I'll talk to you later.